Hello, Ron Mall from the Western Welding Academy. I'm classroom instructor. I'm going to go over a few basic weld symbols today, welding symbols, and uh, just want to get started by uh, I'm going to show what the uh, weld looks like, but also what it looks like on a drawing. So the weld symbol itself indicates what you have to do to prepare the steel and what the weld will look like when it's done. Your drawing is going to tell you how you prep your steel and how, what you do to prep it. Here's a drawing with welding symbols and weld symbols on it. The welding symbol is the whole unit. The weld symbol are the little marks that make it more distinctive. You have to understand there is an other side and an arrow side. The arrow side is this part of it here. The other side is this part of it here. Same thing here. Arrow sides here, other sides here. So if this is the arrow side, that will go to this part of the symbol, which you can see here it does. This is the other side, so it goes across to here, which you can see that it does. On this one, the arrow side is where all of the beveling is done. You can see that's what the case is here. The other side has no preparation or no, no weld there. Every drawing has an indication of what you have to do to prep the bevel or the iron, and it also shows what the weld shape should look like when you're done. Okay, here we have the weld symbol calling for two fillets. Whenever you will see a fillet or any straight line on the weld symbols will always be to the left side. Doesn't matter how they end up on the steel, when it's drawn, the straight line is always to the left because you read these symbols left to right just like you do books. So here you have two fillets, one on each side. This is what the shape of the weld would look like when you're done. This would obviously arrow side and other side. This one's the same thing. You have a fillet, but it's only on the other side. So here's the arrow side, here's the other side. That's what that weld will look like. In this welding symbol, your, your weld symbol just says edge weld, and that's all. It doesn't give you any more details. So it is other side, doesn't matter other side or whatever. Actually, this is arrow side, so it'll be right here. If it was other side, it would be right here. So one side only, and it's, like I say, it's a very unusual weld. I can honestly say I've only maybe done it twice in the time I've been welding, so not something that uh, you're going to see very often, but it is a symbol. You need to know what it is. It, these symbols can be a lot like hieroglyphics. If you don't know what you're looking at, you can't tell what it is. Okay, number six is uh, four fillets. When you're talking arrow side and other side, you don't go through a full piece of plate. You go through the joints. So this is arrow side, this is other side, arrow side, other side. And that's how you end up being this way. You can't come across a, a place it doesn't have a joint. So essentially you would have all four fillets at, at each place. Number seven is kind of an unusual weld that you'll get them depending on what is engineered for this to do, but you have a full V and a half V on the same plate. Arrow side is the half V. Now depending on which direct point the arrow is taking here, it indicates that this half V, all the work will be done on this side. This doesn't matter because it's done on both sides, on the other side side. So your weld and your prep will look just like that. Again, a very strong uh, combination, full penetration. It works very well for what you're doing. Number eight, again, you have a fillet here, but there's no room for a fillet here. So you have to do a bevel and then you fill that bevel. So you have welds both sides. And on this one, you have fillets both sides. So this is what you're finished. The only prep you would have to do is to bevel this side and then put three fillets in. Number nine, again, is it's dissimilar situation unless you're, most of the time this would be machined in, the two double J. And the reason that is, it's very hard to make that work with a grinder. You can, it's not going to be perfect, but there are actually times when that's exactly what they want. So you'll either machine it or do your best to make it, but you have to prep it into a half round both ways and leave just a little bit in between, not much in between, so you get 
near full penetration on that weld. And uh, most of the time when they're doing a bevel, it's because they don't want a full fillet that's gonna be in the way of something else. Number 10, again, almost the same thing as number nine, only the, the bevels are straight both sides and you would obviously prep that to almost an arrowhead shape and then use your weld to fill up both of those. Again, almost a 100% weld and you don't have a fillet in the way of whatever you're trying to do. 11 is essentially a double bevel again. Uh, it's an edge bevel. You'll have both sides are beveled, but instead of being a T situation, it's edge. Edge. Again, you do it very good penetration weld, and it also, uh, if you have to and it calls for it, you can grind it down or mill it down, and you don't have any weldment that's in the way of anything you would want to do with that blade. Again, this is both arrow side and other side. They're symmetric, so there is no problem with where they go. This is a U, essentially two facing jades, but they call it a U bevel, and it will be a, a good strong weld, and normally you cut it deep enough to where it if you have the dimension here, you might say zero or a sixteenth or whatever, that will tell you the gap you need to have between the two small straight lands, if you want to call them that, and it, that way you'll get be able to get the penetration clear through. I did not use any measurements in these at all. We will get into that probably in the next level, but this will give you an idea what the U looks like and how it is prepped and welded. So once you get through with it, this is nearly 100% weld as well, and very little weld on the outside to be in the way of anything. And I guess this concludes part one on this. We'll go from there and make another one pretty soon.